Hi there and welcome to this video. You know that on my Patreon site there is a huge community of smart enthusiastic traders that help each other out and suggest all kinds of interesting trading sources, strategies and indicators. This time one of my patrons, Tango Trader, suggested to also investigate strategies and indicators that are presented in the journal Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities. So hereby a shout out to Tango Trader. I would never turn down such a smart and intriguing suggestion. So let's add this source to my collection of trading strategy resources and dive straight into an indicator featured in the latest issue of this magazine that is called the MACD and Volatility Normalized Momentum Indicator. The normal MACD indicator is a hugely popular indicator and is used by millions of people all around the world. I myself use it as one of the best and reliable exit indicators. However, there are a couple of shortcomings of this indicator, like for example that you cannot compare two assets based on the MACD because of different absolute values and you cannot standardize it between assets or timeframes. Some other negative aspects are that the MACD is not time stable, signal line crossovers are unreliable in slow momentum environments and crossovers can also be laid in high momentum trend reversals. Now in this article in the journal Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities, Alex Spiro Glue addresses the limitations of the classic moving average conversion divergence by creating the MACD V. This MACD variant uses volatility normalization to measure an asset's momentum while also accounting for its volatility, ensuring that momentum readings remain comparable across different assets and time periods. You can also find this indicator on TradingView if you search for MACD V. Click on the version that is created by Rezilla and it will automatically be added to the chart. Now this volatility normalization is accomplished by using the average true range into the equation and this adjusts the MACD line with the inherent volatility of the asset. This also makes the MACD range from minus 150 or so to plus 150. And because this happens with all assets, you can now compare them between each other and see when they are truly oversold or overbought. The article also suggests some rudimentary trading strategies that makes use of this indicator and for this video I will recreate the easy to follow 70 and 77 system. This trading strategy can also easily be done manually, so there is no reason for anybody not to try this out in your system. The rules are as follows. There has to be a distinction between bullish and bearish trends and in the article the EMA 200 is suggested to use here. Only long entries are allowed in this trading strategy. Enter the trade when the MACD V gets above 70 because this indicates a strong bullish momentum. The trade should be exited when there is a 2.85% profit from the entry price. Or the trade should be stopped after 15 days uh, in profit or just exit after 77 days, no matter what. Now there are no stop losses discussed or any other rules in this case, so I have to make some minor adjustments for the backtesting agent so that I can use it to do automatic backtests. And I also have added an extra rule that exits the trade when the MACD V gets below its signal line, just to make sure that the trades are not entered when prices lose momentum. So I hard coded these rules into an algorithm that can be backtested without any human intervention over a large dataset and over multiple assets to see if this proposed trading strategy really has the potential to make money in the cryptocurrency markets. Now this code can also be downloaded from my Patreon site together with a full report of the strategy's performance and all backtest output so that you can verify and retest my results on your specific setup and pairs. And by the way, I also have written the book about algorithmic trading for beginners. So if you find this content interesting and you want to start trading or testing automatically, but I have no clue about algorithmic trading strategies or where or how to begin this journey, then I think this book will provide you with all the information to get you started. You can download it as an ebook or buy it as a paper book on Amazon. And after reading this book, you'll have no excuse anymore to not start this great endeavor. After creating the code and backtesting it with the backtesting engine the FragTrade bot provides, I have the following results on the performance of this simple trading strategy with the MACD V indicator. The 4 hour time frame got the highest score overall with a total of 247 points by my scoring system. However, this score was mainly due to the fact that the end balance was more than twice as high as on the one day time frame, which also resulted in a higher CAGR score. 
Also, the Kalmar and Sortina ratios are better on this time frame, according to the backtesting engine. However, I am still in charge of my own decisions, and this time I want to concentrate more on the results on the one day time frame. Firstly, because the strategy in the article was focused on that time frame, and secondly, because the win percentage and drawdown are much better than that of the 4 hour time frame. Also, more pairs favor the strategy on the one day time frame. The scoring system is more of a guide than an absolute fact, and so this time I follow my gut feelings here. To start with the behavior of the strategy when it comes to equity, the equity curve here shows that this strategy based on the MACDV catches bull waves very well. It also seems to recognize bearish circumstances too, and during these periods it will remain dormant. Which you can clearly see in these flat sections. Nothing happens here, and this strategy will rarely take actions. Well, sometimes when there is a false breakout signal, which you can see in these small peaks, which are then followed by a drop in equity. Overall the strategy has more wins than losses, that we already saw in the table of course, but here is shown in a graph that uh, is also shown how these numbers are built up historically. It is always very important to know the potential drawdown of a strategy, and in this case this is no different. In this chart we can see that during the last bear market cycle, this strategy had a max of 25% drawdown, which is uh, pretty good for a trend trading algorithm. However, there is a cutoff in the back tests in uh, 2023, and it might be well that this drawdown could go higher after this, so be aware of that. Another interesting chart here is the time it takes for an average trade to finish. Here we can see that the trade has an average duration of uh, 308 minutes, that's around uh, 5 hours or so. And this is totally different from what we have seen in earlier videos, where trades are closed within minutes. This chart is a second confirmation that we are looking at a swing trading strategy for longer time frames. Also the exit reason of a strategy is interesting to know. Here the exits are mainly caused by the ROI, whether this is because it reached a 2.85% profit, or just that it exited the trade after 15 uh, or 77 days, followed by the MACDV that get below the signal line. And if we then can go to the plot where we can see which exit signal provides us with the highest gains, then we see that the ROI exit is the main cause for all these gains. The exit where the MACD gets below its signal line is actually losing money for us. And this is the exit signal that should be improved further to make the strategy even more profitable as it is now. Now there are lots of other charts that I can discuss, but these ones were the most interesting to show. You can analyze the performance of this strategy if you download this full report from my Patreon site. Let's just end this video with the position of this algorithm in the strategy league which is in the lower part of the upper 50% of trading strategies. I do have to mention that this was just one of the mentioned strategies that were proposed in the paper where the MACD was presented. These other proposed strategies look also very interesting and I might do some of them in the future. For me the MACD V is certainly promising and it might well be that this indicator might replace the original MACD as my favorite indicator in a certain point in time. Mainly because I can now finally compare different assets on their MACD performance. But this is it for now, I hope you liked the video and got some useful information from it. And if you do, then please show your appreciation by clicking on the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, remarks or want to let me test out an indicator or trading strategy, then let me know in the comments as well and I'll see what I can do. Again, all stuff can be downloaded from my Patreon site, so there's no reason not to test this out on your own setup as well. For now we are at the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!